To be honest with you guys, I have already made up my mind. I am going to play a warrior. That's it. We're playing a warrior, and that's what's going to happen. However, other people are like, Well, what about me? I don't want to play a warrior. Can't you watch it for me? All right, fine. Let's start with Assassin. Why is Assassin more popular than Warrior? Look at this. Warrior's the second. Like, how the fuck is Assassin? Oh, oh, that's why. Okay, yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and we're, yeah, yeah. I mean, look, guys. Yeah. I mean, it's not fair. All right. Here we go. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Arix, and welcome to the world of Lost Ark. Hi. Arcasia awaits, a world full of mysteries, monsters, dungeons, demons, and so much more. But in order to embark on your adventure, first you must make a character and choose a class. And therein lies the reason behind this video. Some Today we're going to take a look at one of the five oh main classes in Lost Ark, the Assassin, as well as the associated advanced classes to help you make up your mind for when you dive in. I want to give a quick shout out to Amazon for very kindly sponsoring this video. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about Lost Ark, you can click the link in the description box down below. That Minotaur looking guy Now, cool. Lost Ark has five main classes for you Jesus. to choose from. The Warrior, Martial Artist, Gunner, Mage, and Assassin. And each of those main classes is then broken into an array of advanced classes, or subclasses to use another commonly known mm -hmm. term. In total, between the five classes, there are 15 advanced classes giving you plenty of ways to play the game based on your preferred playstyle. But in this video, we're going to be focusing solely on the Assassin. Assassins are mysterious melee makers who fight demonic with demonic, channeling the dark powers in the name of the light in quick, colourful attacks. They are close range fighters who harness their demonic power to crush anything That's that stands cool. in their way, and what they lack in overall health, they more than make up for in mobility and burst damage potential. Okay. Their damage okay. scales with dexterity, which is the main attribute for this class, yeah. so keep this in mind as you level up and obtain gear. Yeah. If you typically take on the role of a DPS in MMOs, then the Assassin will be right up your street. Dive in, dish out high, burst damage, and dash out before the enemy even knows what hit them. So it's basically like that bullshit that monks do in WoW. Or demon hunters. Yeah, that that's literally, that's what this shit is. Is this an ARPG? So, like, people always ask this shit. Because, like, let's be honest, like, most ARPGs are isometric. So, like, you see a game like Lost Ark, and it's like, bro, what the fuck, right? Like, how is this not an ARPG? This is actually an MMO. It just has an ARPG uh, feel to it. Yeah, it's it's going to be weird to try this kind of stuff out. It really will be. But, um, you know, we'll see what's going to happen. The Assassin then splits into, currently, one of two advanced <laughs> classes. The Shadow Hunter and the Deathblade. The Shadow Hunters prefer to beat the demons at their own game. They can shapeshift into powerful demonic forms to unleash chaotic power. When their inner demon is unleashed, Shadow Hunters get access to incredibly destructive powers she alongside the increased demon? health and movement speed. Quite literally giving the enemies a taste of their own medicine. And honestly, this is probably my favorite of the two advanced oh, classes. Purely because of these badass demonic powers. It makes you feel so incredibly powerful going full demon mode to lay waste to anything that stands in your way. The funny but thing whenever I see this is like... Berserker's just like that all the time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, Berserker's like that all, all the time. Like what, what do you mean like a cooldown? This class, melee attacks in human form will build your Shadow Burst meter, which is the meter used to transform into a demon. You can take advantage of your tripod system to either gain more Shadow Burst charge on attacks, allowing for more frequent demon mode usage, or you can consume Berserker that charge for that. more That's... powerful attacks. So depending on what you want to lean more into, you have options. Oh. Okay, Despite all right, all right. That is demon mode, though. You are still not a tank, so as you'd expect that from is an assassin, cool. you still want to remain mobile, dart in, dish out damage, ideally from the back, and get out before you die. One really cool move in this class is Demonic Clone. This sees you call forth an incarnation of the devil to attack by your side, performing wide sweeping attacks. The devil's and purple. I thought he was red. Spinning weapon allows you to send out both of your weapons, making them spin where they stand, inflicting consistent damage. Okay. First, you send out the left one, then hitting the key a second time allows for the second blade to be sent out. And if you want to go for That's power, you also have Demon Vision, which will see you fire purple out a equals high win. energy yeah. beam of destruction. Overall, though, the Shadow Hunter is a relatively easy class to play with excellent damage output it's just and like some very a demon hunter. Moves. A lot of fun and a great place to dive in. Makes sense. Alternatively, you have the Deathblade. This advanced class uses a total of three swords that they wield what? alongside their Power of Chaos, and they use these to swiftly slash their foes. The fast paced combo attack. Remember, I was the telling you guys about, like, this, about how they just kind of go wild. They're like, uh, yeah. So, I should use three swords at the same time. Like, how the fuck's that gonna work? Uh, yeah. 
She'll like throw one. It's like juggling, you know? The light dual sword Zoro? and the long sword are yeah. great for overpowering enemies, leading to death by a thousand cuts. This is a combo heavy class that does require cuts? a degree of mechanical skill in order to execute high damaging combos, so it will take some practice to get this down, but when successful, they're fantastic at crowd controlling enemies with a variety of attacks and can then take full advantage of that window to dish out devastating damage. That's cool. As a Deathblade, you'll be using a wide range of rapid hitting attacks to build up the Deathblade Arts, your class identity skill. When activated, you become a supercharged version of yourself that's faster, okay. hits harder, and can okay. unleash a devastating final blow. Okay. The Deathblade has access to an array of powerful skills, but to call out just one, Moonlight Sonic is a very nice ability. Great damage output, a means to pull enemies towards you to set them up for follow-ups, and the ability to change the element through the tripod system, with Dark being a great pick for endgame. Yeah, that's you also have really Blitz cool. Rush, allowing you to charge forward to advance and attack your enemy. Doing so sees you inflict damage with your dual sword, and when overcharged, you can even inflict further damage and knock back foes. I don't know I if I'll play this, this or class not. features excellent mobility, high damage output, and excellent buffs to support your team in endgame activities. I feel like a class that has a lot of mobility, though, is like really fun for me to play. Uh, it's, it's like I, I, I either like playing a class that's like super high damage that dies in one hit or a class that never dies ever i i don't i don't like being anywhere in the middle i either want to play a complete glass cannon or a big fat fucking tank it's also a fantastic pvp class albeit with a slightly steeper learning curve that. so if you fancy diving into the arena and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with other players then this might be a great pick for you Additionally, all classes have the choice of two powerful Awakening abilities. These are unlocked once you hit level 50, and they consume a resource known as Awakening Chaos Peace. Okay. You can only use one at a time, so you must pick your favorites, but the Deathblade has access to either Flash Blink or Blade Assault. Flash Blink will see you quickly dash through the foe with all swords, piercing the enemy and hitting multiple times. Meanwhile, Blade Assault will see you collect energy to attract enemies, inflict damage with twin swords, and then summon countless swords for a powerful finish. <laughs> even blow. more swords. Meanwhile, the Shadow Hunter has access only to either Gates of Eruption or Fallen Ruin. Gates of Eruption sees you unleash the power of demons to open the Gates of Hell, that's inflicting cool. damage to all enemies caught in the field. Yeah, that's fucking Meanwhile, badass. Meanwhile, Fallen Ruin, a personal favorite of mine, will see you leap into the air, radiate a laser beam towards the ground, and then immediately cause the ground beneath to explode. Basically, big, earth-shattering damage. Okay. So, there you have it. That's a quick look at the Assassin, and the two currently available advanced classes. Tekken type Both shit, yeah, Both fantastic picks for those looking to dish out high burst damage while still remaining mobile on the battlefield. Again, massive shout out to Amazon for very kindly sponsoring this video. Don't forget to click the link in the description box down below if you want to find out more about Lost Ark. And of course, keep it locked on the channel for more Lost Ark content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next it's one. It's going to be hard for me to tell myself that I should play this instead of playing a fucking Berserker. Uh, I'm going to be honest. There are some people, they like it a lot, but I am i don't know if I'm going to be able to get into that too much. So let's go back. We're going to look at the next one. So the next one is going to be the gunner. Now, this guy, I'm assuming, probably has a gun. So we're going to see how this goes. Now, I, I just, I, I'm assuming that. Hello, everyone. My name is Nagura, and today I'm going to give you a rundown of the gunner class and all its advanced classes for Lost Ark. The team okay. over at Amazon Games have sponsored me to create this video. So big shout out to them. And let's get started. Why would you want to play gunner? All the advanced gunner classes gun. are DPS focused, all of them being powerful ranged attackers. The appeal of the gunner is okay. consistent heavy damage from a safe distance. Now there's one exception in the subclasses, which I'll get to later. What? what is, this reminds me of that gun in fucking Hades. Whenever you get this gun and it literally just shoots nuclear bombs. And then if you get, remember, remember that gun, what's it called? The fucking uh, Aeris Rail or whatever? Uh, yeah, you just, did you get the, the hammer thing? And it shoots like five bombs and it can one-shot bosses. Like, I can't imagine this not being overpowered. If the gun's that big, yeah. Exegrim, but the generally yeah. allure of gunplay, the Something rule like of that. cool, and feeling like that ranged badass is why you'll want to go gunner. Let's start off with Gunslinger. The Gunslinger wields pistols, a shotgun, and a rifle. Okay. A Gunslinger can freely switch Hell between yeah, each brother. of these weapons depending on your current needs. The pistols are your standard weapon stance of choice. The shotgun is your Close best range. option for short range burst area of effect that. damage. And lastly, the rifle is your best pick for long range damage. Yep. You can choose which ability you want to use for it's each of those weapons dude. and then freely switch between them. 
There's a nice indicator in the middle of your user interface, oh, the one showing how using. many abilities are ready and how many are still on cooldown for the two weapons you currently are not using. Wow! Let's talk about each weapon in a bit more detail, starting off with your handgun stance. This is your basic fighting stance, That's cool. suitable for quickly attacking enemies in a relatively large area. Oh. Your basic attack turns into a quick double tap from your handgun an with a, a medium Diablo range that can like pierce that. through enemies. Some handgun abilities are Somersault Shot, a forward jump while also firing your handguns looking pretty badass. And Equilibrium fires both of your handguns across a broad area around your character. Is this is bro, this is some Van Helsing guns. shit. Shotgun God damn. is great at close combat, dealing a huge amount of damage with a high chance to break gear or stagger enemies. Your auto attacks turn into a short to mid-range shotgun attack. Some abilities are Hour of Judgment, fires three bullets in a cone-shaped area. If you hit a target with a bullet, it will scatter behind the target doing additional area of effect damage. And okay. Last Request fires a powerful explosive bullet, doing a big amount of damage and launching enemies into the air. So that's like a super close range attack. Last but not least, Rifle Stance. Okay. Rifle Stance is for long range attacks. Your auto attack turns into high range, big damage shot, and some of the rifle abilities are... Catastrophe. Throws a claymore at the target location and detonates it. Make sure that's to cool. release it at the correct time. Perfect shot fires a that high. That gives me a little bit of PTSD though. Whenever I see that, uh, because whenever I would play Warzone and I would drive around in a truck, the one thing that I would never want to see is the thing where they go like, they they take it, they go like whoop, and they throw it, and it goes right on my windshield. And the next thing that I see, I'm fucking blown up. I'm dead. Yeah, the fucking C4. It was very upsetting. Speed large caliber bullets. And if you release it during the perfect time, you do uh -huh. additional damage and knock back enemies. Now to the awakening abilities. Yeah. High caliber HE bullet shoots one big bullet forward that creates a large rare blast. This is a very high range. God and Eye of Twilight might damage. just be the coolest I am the main character ability in the game. Now if you look at your watch and the time is always high noon, or you are looking for an easy to learn slash hard to master subclass, the Gunslinger is a flavorsome and fun class that feels great. I, Moving I might on try to this one out. Do you know Gunfu? Yeah, that's cool. That I does. The male counterpart to the Gunslinger okay. retains the ability to switch between weapons depending on the situation and has a lot of similar abilities to the Gunslinger. Dada is a more punishing advanced class in comparison to Gunslinger though, but the reward is a high skill ceiling that better players can abuse. Same as for oh, the Gunslinger, can... the three oh, weapons wow. you can switch between are Handgun, Rifle, and Shotgun. Some abilities are Spiral Tracker, throws a handgun at the target location and does area of effect damage for 15 hits. Wait, what? Throws a handgun at the You throw the gun? Of course! <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh my god! Target location and does area of effect damage for 15 hits. Meteor Stream fires bullets into the air and calls them down like meteors. And Deathfire cool. hits all nearby enemies in a cool blossom of lead and death. Yeah. Oh, they had this Moving ability. on to Shotgun ultimate stance. ability and here's a storm. Shotgun Rapid Fire does exactly what you think it does. Unleashing three heavy short range attacks in quick sequence. Shotgun Dominator yeah, I was fires about two that. shotguns followed by a finishing shot Bala, yeah. that knocks down enemies. And last but not least, Rifle Stands. Spiral Flame is a line attack that charges up and launches a powerful flame bullet in a line that sets everything ablaze in its path. I feel like the and grenade was way cooler. An shot fires four rounds of high caliber bullets and you are able to change direction as the ability is going off. Okay. Now the most interesting part, the Awakening Skills. That Eye's Awakening Skills are Bursting Flare, which is an insane triple tap line attack, dealing a huge amount of damage and knocking enemies away. Yeah, I would and Clay Bombardment so. is an area of effect ability, throwing multiple explosives around you, then burst firing your handgun at them and launching enemies into the air. Jesus. To summarize again, Deadeye and Gunslinger are very similar. Deadeye being one of the more punishing advanced classes. But the reward is a high skill ceiling that better players can abuse. Let's talk about Artillerist. What's the point of playing a gunner if you're not going to use the biggest guns available to you that would make an 80s action film blush? Okay. Blast the face of your enemies with okay, the shotgun. Okay, all right, here we go. Now, now we're talking. Melt mobs in satisfying AOE using the flamethrower. 
Fill him full of holes with the disgustingly satisfying Gatling gun. God damn. Or scorch the earth with the ridiculous. <laughs> this is a freedom shot. class, but this boys. This doesn't mean the artillerist is some sort of ranged glass cannon. Far from it. The artillerist comes with a surprising amount of speed and shields that mean you can tank a lot of hits other classes might not get away with. Wow. Gameplay wise, if you hit enemies with your abilities, it fills up your firepower gate. And I'm assuming the reason why they have more shields is that because the weapon is larger, you have a, a, an animation lock that is longer inside of each attack. Am I, am I right on that one? I'm guessing? Yes. Okay. We're still going to use it. Depending on how much firepower you have, I'll just play the game, the game 10%, if I die. 20%, or even 30% damage increase. Once you fill up the firepower to full, you can activate Barrage Mode. What the fuck And in Barrage that? Mode, you hop into your Siege Cannon and unleash bombastic DPS. <laughs> your awakening abilities are... It's Bastion. Missile Barrage, a targeted ability raining down explosive bullets in a big circular cool. area. And Heavy Turret, spawns a turret at the targeted location, mm -hmm. dealing big amounts of area of effect damage and additionally shooting a large beam. Those abilities are being repeated multiple times before the turret despawns. Jesus Christ. So if you want to be the me in Ridiculous Mac, Artillerist is for you. Yeah, that's The last cool. advanced class we have to talk about is Sharpshooter. Guns? In my fantasy game? No thank you, sir. If oh, you want a ranged physical DPS advanced class but don't need those loud clumsy guns, oh, then fuck. Sharpshooter is the arrow popping powerhouse for you. Dude, the sharpshooter so blends cool. ranged and melee combat. You'll rain damage down wow. from the range. Then, when your melee cooldowns are up and it's safe, you'll wait into melee to do what even more damage. What the hell is damage. this, brother? But you won't be doing this alone. The sharpshooter's core class mechanic has a trusty companion you can summon that this helps you with either sustained damage with a debuff or burst damage by making the birdie explode. Sorry, birdie. Some standard ranged abilities are Arrow Shower, a placed AoE barrage attack, Arrow Wave sends a tornado arrow hitting an enemy up to four times. Imagine and some melee abilities are Blade Storm, unleashes a flurry of blades around you. And Claymore Mine, set up a mine at the target location and retreat at the same time, knocking enemies back and dealing damage on impact. That's really If you cool. hit enemies with your abilities, you will gain Hawk Meter, displayed at the bottom middle of your user interface. Okay. Once it fills up all the way, you can summon your Silver Hawk. Yeah. Your Silver Hawk assists you with attacking enemies and can use two active abilities. Summon Wings of bird. Storm. The Hawk flies in a circle at the target Whoa, location, fuck. doing area of effect damage. God damn. And Last Rush. It's sends an the Silver bird. Hawk toward the target location, exploding for a huge amount of damage. Keep in mind, your pet disappears after you- I feel like the thing is, there's- We have the Eagle, we have the bombs. If this class had a gun, you just call it America using this ability, so don't use it too early to get the most out of it. Now to your awakening abilities. Fenrir's Messenger summons a big ghost wolf that charges towards the targeted location. Yeah. And Golden Eye is a bird apocalypse tornado to take out nearby foes. Did she- Additionally, Golden Eye is a bird apocalypse tornado- Oh man. Is this the sequel to Sharknado? <laughs> yeah, this is the fucking- it's like, you guarantee, like, they watched it over there in Korea, they're like, Well, that's fucking cool, why don't we add this in the game? But, like, with birds, because that way it'll, it'll make more sense. Though, yeah, it's more realistic. Nearby folks. It's birds. Additionally, you also gain a powerful stealth for 7 seconds. Sharpshooter cool. is the quintessential archer. So if that's what you're looking for in your video games, then this is the one for you. All right, I hope this helped you get an overview of the Gunners and all its advanced classes. I, this one looks pretty If you need additional cool. information or you want to check yeah, out I'm the game, say, then click the link cool. in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. That's a good, good video. That's a good video. Look at that. Look at that, dude. It's a bird apocalypse, man. Yeah, there you go. All right, all right, all right. Let's go ahead. Let's look at the other ones, okay, guys? Give me just one second here. Now... I don't know how I'm going to like a martial art. Like, uh, any time that a game has, like, a class that has a... It's like they don't have a weapon. Like, what are you trying to prove? You know what I mean? Like, what, what are you trying to prove? Uh, yeah, it's like some fucking, like, Goku, like, monk shit. Like, it's stupid. So, but we'll, we'll see. They probably got, like, other, uh, like, subclasses that have weapons in here. So, let's go take a look at this. Martial artist. 
Hey what's up guys, my name is Arix and welcome to the world of Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. Arcasia awaits, a world full of mysteries, monsters, dungeons, demons and so much more. Okay. But in order to embark on your adventure, first you must make a character and choose a class and therein lies the reason behind this video. Today we're taking a look at one of the five main classes in Lost Ark, the Martial Artist, as well as the associated advanced classes to help you make up your mind for when you dive in. I want to give a quick shout out to Amazon for very kindly sponsoring this video. Don't forget, if you want to find out more about Lost Ark, you can click the link in the description box down below. Sorry. Now, Lost Ark has five... Like, as I said, guys, I... I really didn't mean to pause it there. I swear to God, like, I, I did not mean to pause it there. But uh, I'll take this time to uh, to explain something, uh, you know, at, at this moment. Uh, basically, uh, I... As I said, I am a, a master of ignoring things. So, I can have, like, an annoying thing on my screen in WoW for, like, eight months, and I never update the add-on. I'm like, ah, it's there again, fuck, I click it off again. Like, I never even think about it. ...main classes for you to choose from. The Warrior, Martial Artist, Gunner, Yeah, it's mage, the same stuff we've seen before. And each of those classes is then broken into an array of advanced classes, mm -hmm. or subclasses, to use another commonly known term. Of course. In total, between the five classes, there are 15 advanced classes, giving you plenty of ways to play the game based on your preferred playstyle. But in this video, we're going to be focusing solely on the Martial Artist. Martial Artists are quick-footed fighters that excel at rushing down their enemy with combined attacks at lightning speeds. Right. As masters of hand-to-hand -hand combat, they pride themselves on their quick reflexes and powerful fighting techniques. If DPS is the role that you typically gravitate towards in MMOs, and you like being up in the enemy's face, then the Martial Artist might be one for you to check out. Okay. Dive in, dish out fast, okay. high damage combos with incredible flair and style, and take down your opponents with the sheer might of your bare hands. Or feet. The Martial Artist can kick too, and even fire giant energy beams, but more on that later. The Martial okay. Artist then splits into, currently, one of four different advanced classes. The Striker, War Dancer, Scrapper, and Soul Fist. Starting off with the Striker, this class attacks enemies like a strong wind. Equipped with a variety of physical attacks and fast movement, they excel That's at aerial cool. combos, hitting and juggling that, that enemies actually, for fantastic cool. crowd control, and then taking advantage of powerful elemental skills to turn the tide in battle. Okay. At the core of the Striker is the Esoteric like Meter, your identity almost. gauge. Your gauge fills when you perform attacks, and upon filling the various nodes, you're then granted access to an array of powerful esoteric abilities, or ultimate abilities if you like. Different abilities have different costs, and later on it is possible to extend your esoteric meter to have four nodes, but for now let's keep things simple. Okay. Attack to fill the meter, and use these nodes to do big damage. Makes sense. With that in mind, the striker yeah. has a somewhat burst-focused playstyle. Your regular attacks are quick, deal decent damage, and can combo enemies nicely, but really you're playing around your big damage moves and cooldowns. Of course, one of the great things about Lost Ark are just how amazing some of your moves look. Naturally, you may gravitate towards certain moves end game for high damage combos, but to call out a few cool looking moves, you have Tiger Emerges, where you advance forward, inflict fire damage, then perform an upward attack which sees a flaming tiger appear at the ground. Storm Dragon Awakening is the Street Fighter special. Tiger knee your enemies in the jaw. You jump, spin I, I your got, body, I and kick to I, I gotta admit, this shit looks cool. Foes. You can then press the key this again shit does to follow cool. up with a downward strike. And the Moon Flash Kick is a great way to tackle multiple enemies. You dash forward in this swift motion, following that with a flurry of kicks that pummel the enemy into the dust. In addition to your vast array of skills, you also have your two Awakening abilities to choose from. Okay. The first of which is Explosive Heat Awakening, which will see you advance forward and then dish out four explosive strikes, creating this huge, devastating, flaming impact. Damn. Meanwhile, your other option is True Heavenly Awakening, which sees you gather powerful energy in your legs whilst performing this majestic sweeping motion, only to follow up with two devastatingly powerful kicks. Moving on from there, next up we have the War Dancer. Is this like this a advanced class version? isn't merely a master of martial yeah. arts. They are also okay. capable of augmenting their lightning quick this fighting is, styles. With this elemental. is what I was telling y'all about before, where like they have the male and the female classes of many of these. So yeah, I mean, this does look pretty fucking cool. Like, as I said, I'm not really one for this kind of a class, but the uh, the the stuff about it does look good. You pick a server, I'm going to talk about that shit after I finish watching all of these videos. I also want, people wanted me to look at the patch notes, so uh, I'll go through all of that. Power. They, they the are slightly different, though. Elemental energy yeah. and then unleash it in these devastating no, attacks I know that they're and slightly gravity different. defying maneuvers. The core of the war dancer is actually very similar to that of the striker. Is it kind of like the difference? Like this is like a, it's an abstract a analogy, but like is it like the difference between like Fox and Falco uh, and Falco, or uh, like Captain Falcon and Ganondorf in uh, Smash Brothers Melee? Yeah, 
Yeah, okay, all right, cool. Good analogy? What do you mean good? They're, they're all good. You don't need to tell me that. I know. Dancer 2 has an esoteric meter, which fills when you perform attacks, and those gauges can then be used to perform esoteric attacks. So again, the War Dancer has a burst focus playstyle revolving around building meter and pulling off big damage moves. Okay. However, it is worth noting, one of the preferred ways to play this class as you move towards end game revolves around an inscription that actually stops your gauge generation, It'll and instead sees you focus hour. much more on applying yeah. your buff and debuffs, and then using your high damage skills to dish out as much damage as possible in a short window. If you intend to go down this route, which tends to be the favourite for war dancers, mm -hmm. then the skills Roar of Courage and Wind's Whisper will be important to you. The former will debuff the enemy and drop their crit resistance, meanwhile the latter will buff your party, increasing attack and move speed. The Sweeping Kick is a very powerful burst damage move, which can sweep enemies off their feet, juggle them and allow you to deliver a follow-up devastating blow. Cool. The Lightning Kick is another fun move to use, seeing you deliver a flurry of kicks inflicting lightning damage and finishing up in a powerful strike that calls lightning down from the heavens above. Of course, you also have your awakening skills too, the first of which is Flash Rage Blow. This is a holding skill that will see you dash forward, dish out a flurry of vicious strikes, and end in a huge, powerful shockwave knocking enemies back. That's Letting badass. Letting go the key before the meter maxes out also releases a shockwave. Alternatively, you have Fist of Dominance, which is an incredible looking move. With this, you use the power of the elementals to pull enemies close. You then dash within this bubble. Up that's some fucking, bro, this shit is some fucking... <laughs> That I think that's probably the coolest one that we've seen out of any of these. Like this is some fucking like anime Naruto like Avatar. Yeah, like this, bro, what the fuck? Like, yeah, this is the anime masterclass. Watch this shit. I do. I do it one more again. Okay, watch. Looking move. With this, you use the power of the elementals to pull enemies close. You then dash within this bubble damn. up to six times, striking as you go, and finish up in a huge energy explosion. Definitely one of my favorite moves from a visual I would say view. so, yeah. This, that's then probably one of the There ones. you have the Scrapper. Armed All with right. a heavy gauntlet, Scrappers draw on two inverse forms of attack energy that feed off of each other in order to deliver non-stop destruction. They have excellent attack, defense, mobility, and overall lasting power, making them a very balanced pick, capable of throwing enemies off guard. So if you really want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with your enemies, but also take a few beatings at the same time and still live to tell the tale, the Scrapper has the tools. Okay. At the core of the Scrapper is a rather interesting balance meter. You have two gauges, the stamina gauge and the shock energy gauge. The first is yellow, the second is green. You'll also notice that your skills are also either Oh, or bro, I think this might be like Red Mage. Where you have to balance between two different uh, resources. Yeah, Red Mage Gauge. That, that's the way it seems to me. Green. But super simply, using yellow skills will consume stamina and build green meter. And using green skills will consume green meter and build yellow. So what you essentially have with the Scrapper is this back and forth gameplay where you're using both sets of skills <laughs> to maintain both meters. Your stamina skills are typically much faster. Yeah, it seems a lot buffs. like Red Mage. Meanwhile, your shock skills are much slower, sometimes have cast times, but do result in big damage. It's also worth noting the Scrapper has lots of stagger and impairment, and can even buff teammates to increase their impairment to help stagger bosses. So they are a great okay. addition to any team. A few cool moves I enjoy using include the Chain Destruction Fist, which sees you smash the ground to shake the earth up to four times with the last strike knocking foes back. I feel like a huge skill gap in this game is knowing when you can use the abilities that animation lock you on bosses. That's what I'm going to bet a lot of the skill gap is going to be. Because, like, you know that people are going to just sit there and fucking get hit. It's the hardest thing. Yeah. Like, I think, actually, like, I'm not trying to suck my own dick here, right? But I think I'll be able to do pretty good with that. Because I can remember, like, attack patterns pretty well. So, I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. Uh, I think it'll be okay. You can cancel the spell. Yeah, but then you do less damage. Death Sentence will see you generate energy in this ball in front of you before mm -hmm. releasing it in a high damage blast, either eviscerating your opponents or sending them flying. You then have your Awakening skills, the first of which is the Undefeated Dragon King, another favorite move of mine since it sees you leap into the sky and summon two flaming dragons that dive bomb the enemy in oh this my huge God. explosion that sees the ground erupt. Alternatively, the you dragons have come out of the ground too. where you focus all your energy in this giant energy gauntlet, Holy which you then fuck. punch forward, resulting in energy waves being dispersed and the ground cracking. Then finally, the last of the four advanced classes is the Soul Fist. The okay. Soul Fist switches between melee and ranged attacks, which can be used together for explosively powerful combos. They channel a special energy called Adamants, which they can imbue into their abilities or use to sustain themselves through fights. So if you want a mix of both martial arts and mystical abilities, then the Soul Fist offers some great variety. 
At the core of the Soul Fist is the Chi Meter. As part of your identity, pressing Z will buff you up, increasing your energy regeneration, reducing skill okay. cooldowns, and increasing attack speed and damage. There are three levels to this. The first one lasts longest, but has the smallest buffs. But with each subsequent press, the buffs increase and the duration decreases. So the idea here is sense. you use it until it's almost out, then jump to the next level, rinse and repeat, and naturally use this window to dish out higher burst damage. Okay. The Soul Fist has super a lot of very Saiyan. cool yes, moves. Yes, yes, Super Saiyan, Heavenly exactly. Squash will quite literally summon a massive spirit-like palm from the sky to squash enemies. Deadly Finger essentially turns your finger into a gun while you thrust energy into the sky, hitting multiple times. Or even Magnetic Palm, where you smash the ground, draw enemies into the energy field, and then explode. Yes. But your awakening course. abilities are where you really shine. One of the biggest damage moves for the Soul Fist is World Decimation. You leap into the sky and begin concentrating energy. Bro, I've seen this before. Bro, I'm not, I've, I've seen this before back in Dragon Ball Z, man. What the fuck? Oh my god. Energy before throwing down this huge spirit bomb like energy ball that does incredible damage on impact. Alternatively, That's you have Decimation cool. Ray, where you hold the button down yeah. and fire a powerful concentrated energy beam. Then once you finish, you fire a secondary beam where a comrade spirit appears behind you to lend you further energy for even greater damage. Holy shit, that is cool. So there you have it. That's a quick look at the martial artist and the four advanced classes. They are I all might play fantastic this one. picks of yeah, this one is damage cool. output, with the added bonus of allowing you to combo, juggle, and just in general, take out your enemies with flashy fighting moves. Again, massive shout out to Amazon for kind of Literally go video. What the Don't fuck? forget to click the link in the Here's the thing, right? Is like over there, it's like, yeah, of course we're gonna make like Goku. Goku's really cool. It's Dragon Ball Z. So yeah, we have the class. It's like Goku is like dragons. Is I mean a dragon ability. Look at the middle it says fucking Dragon Ball. <laughs> and then there's the spirit bomb and Kamehameha. I mean it's it's obvious. Come on. Description box down below if you want to find out more about Lost Ark. And of course, keep it locked on the channel for more Lost Ark content. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Wow. Okay, all right, that's all right. Uh, actual PvP God class? I mean, I, I could feel that way, uh, you know. Could feel that way, that's what it could be. See how it goes, makes it hard to choose a main. Uh, I don't know about that, but I do think that, like, none of these make me want to play this more than a Berserker, but, uh, We'll look at the mage. So the mage is one of the ones that I've really wanted to look at. That's the one I'm pretty excited about because, like, the gun class is really cool. Like, I, if I had to tier list rank them, well, I so far I would say I like warrior the most, gunner the second, uh, probably uh, assassin maybe the third, martial art the fourth, artist the fourth. That's where I'd probably rank them so far. And we'll see where Mage, uh, where Mage falls on the list, okay? Yeah, Freedom Class, exactly. Here we go. What's up, everyone? My name is Nagura, and today I'm gonna give you a rundown of the Mage class and its advanced classes for Lost Ark. Okay. If you're not sure which class to start off with, or you already know you want to play Mage, but you're unsure on the advanced classes, then this video is this for is you. This is what we gotta see, we gotta figure Amazon it out. Games have sponsored me to create this video, so big shout out to them, and let's get started. All right, let's There are do two it. advanced classes available for Mage, Bard and Sorceress. They both tap into the ancient magic of Arcasia, but the way they I use their that. power in combat is very different. The Sorceress is a very powerful offensive Mage that controls the elements, and bards use magic to heal and buff their allies. Let's take a closer look at Sorceress first. Okay. The Sorceress is an elemental spellcaster, using fire to unleash high area of effect damage and damage over time, ice for slows and freezes, and lightning for damage and stuns. God damn, this looks By using really spells cool. and abilities, you fill up your identity gauge, also known as Mysterious Magic. You can choose to use your Mysterious Magic to buff your own damage, or use it for mobility. Let's talk about the oh, buff first. Wow. Once you accumulate 30% of your bar, you can use Arcane Rupture to increase your damage by 10% and reduce your casting time by 50%. If you Fine. fill up the bar to full, Arcane Rupture turns into Arcane Torrent, increasing your damage by 20%, decreasing your casting speed by 50%, and additionally reducing your active cooldown timers. That's if you use either of the abilities, it will drain your gauge periodically while the buff is active on you, until it's fully drained. Your mobility ability is called Blink and teleports you forwards, additionally making you immune to stun, 
freeze, and similar effects. Well, that seems really Link fucking good. Link costs 30% of your mysterious magic, and can be used while Arcane Rupture or Arcane Torrent is active, but will reduce the duration of the buffs, of course. So now it's like you don't want to use that unless you have to. That's basically it. PvP God, 50% casting time. Yeah, it's like I'm not really going to look and see uh, if it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good for PvP. That's kind of what I would guess. Yeah, you just get kited around. Talk about some of Sorcerer's abilities, starting with some of her fire spells. Blaze creates a rectangular flame forward, dealing fire damage on impact and additional fire damage <laughs> over time. Inferno creates a pillar of flame at the cursor location, dealing fire damage and knocking enemies into the air. Some of her frost spells are... Frost Calls causes a cold slap at the cursor location and does water damage over 4 seconds. And Seraphic Hail creates a huge wave dealing water damage to enemies hit. And lastly, some of Sorcerer's Lightning spells. Lightning Bolt fires lightning in a straight line forward, and you're able to adapt the I like that. That reminds me a little bit of the, uh, was it Crackling Lance and PoE? I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Uh, it's almost the same thing. Class seems pretty boring so far. Oh, I don't know about that. I mean, we'll see. ...while channeling. And Punishing Strike creates a giant thunderstroke at the cursor location. I feel like it doesn't feel Sorcerous as visceral as the- has one awakening ability Ooh. focusing on fire damage, and another one focusing on lightning. That's badass. Apocalypse Call drops random meteor fragments within 18 meters for 8 seconds. Holy shit. So and you can move around while that's happening. And a giant lightning storm around your character. If you like to cast your playstyle, dealing devastating damage from afar, while kiting your enemies with your yeah, elemental the fire abilities ability, look way fucking cool. Then Sorceress is the best choice for you. But enough about all the death okay. and destruction right, of the Sorceress. Okay, alright, now we get the Bard. Let's talk about the lovely Bard and her supportive powers. Okay. Do you want to provide buffs and heals to your allies and be loved by everyone? Then Bard is the pick for you. Alright. Bards use their Lion Harp as a weapon and play powerful tunes to heal and buff their allies. But they don't exclusively just support others, they also have offensive abilities themselves. Bard plays her harp and sends a powerful chord towards her enemies, serving as an auto-attack with a- <laughs> Bro, what's- <laughs> Oh my god! Oh wow! This is the power of music! Oh my god, dude! I feel, uh, feel kinda bad about this one. Stop bullying? Yeah. Really high range. By using your auto attack or other abilities, you will fill up your identity gauge, also known as bubbles. Bard has a total of three bubbles Identity to fill, gauge? And if you have at least one full bar, you can use up your bubbles to cast either Serenade of Courage or Serenade of Salvation. What the Once fuck? you use either of those abilities, it will consume all oh of your bubbles God. and the Serenade will be stronger depending on how many bars you used up. Serenade of Courage buffs all of your party members' damage by 5, 10, or even 15%, depending on the number of bubbles spent. And Serenade of Salvation restores all party members' HP with a powerful yeah. healing over time effect, healing more depending on how many bubbles you accumulated. So is Bard kind of like the class that you run for extra support in a raid? Is that basically it? Yeah, because it can like heal people and make up for mistakes? Yeah, all right. Some of her offensive abilities are Sound Wave. Summons a beautiful melody, damaging and pushing foes away in its path. Sound Holic shoots out a blinding ray of light, damaging enemies in the line. Oh you can even change I think the funniest thing about this, right, is like in all the other videos, right? You might not notice this, but like in all the other videos, in, in the fucking the showcase of the abilities, the abilities killed the mobs. This class sucks so fucking bad. That it doesn't even kill the mobs in the showcase. Race direction mid cast. And Sonic Vibration lifts foes into the air and then slams them back onto the ground yeah. to inflict damage. Some of Bard's supporting abilities are Heavenly Tune buffs party members' attack speed and MP recovery speed, and Guardian Tune reduces the damage taking by 20% for all party members in a 24 meter radius. Bard has one Awakening ability focusing on damage and one Defensive Awakening ability. Oratorio summons angels to sing with her, inflicting holy damage to all enemies in a- That one was fucking cool. Okay, like, I've memed on the class a lot, but that one was actually fucking cool. Circular area around Bard, 
reducing their crit resistance against all attacks from party members for 6 seconds. And Symphonia lets Bard rise into the air to play an ensemble with angels, granting team members a powerful shield. It also damages foes and reduces their attack power, attack speed, and movement speed for 10 seconds. Additionally, you also gain one bubble, so okay. you can cast a powerful combo of Symphonia and Serenade of Salvation, shielding and healing allies in quick succession to counteract heavy incoming air ref effect damage. Bard is one of only two advanced classes in Lost Ark with supporting abilities, and therefore in very high demand. So if you like supporting your team members and listen to some nice harp tunes while yeah. doing so, then this is the pick for you. It sounds great. This is it about mages and Lost Ark. Hopefully I helped you get an overview of this class to make your choice on what to play a bit easier. If you need any additional information, make sure you click the link in the description below, and I'll see you in the open world of Lost Ark. Have a great day everyone, bye! Yeah, the class looks great. Yep. And it's a great looking class. It really is just, uh, it's awesome. So, uh, yeah. Um, those are the classes right there. And I saw the director's cut already earlier today. So yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, it, it's, it's good. So let's look at the uh, pick your class for Warrior. This is the one that I'm going to play. Uh, I've already decided it. Uh, the way that I decided if I'm going to play a Warrior or not is they have the biggest sword. And so I'm playing Warrior. It's that simple. Hey everyone, welcome back. I've got some more Lost Ark content for you today. Turn it up a little Specifically, bit. we'll be taking a closer look at the Warriors. This is sponsored by Amazon. They asked me to give you guys an overview of the three... How's the volume on this? Obviously, it's a little bit low. Okay, it's good. Great. ...for your classes to try to help you figure out which one of these might be right for you. So, let's get right into it. With the Western launch of Lost Ark, the Warrior archetype will have three subclasses for you to choose from. The Berserker, the Paladin, and the Gunlancer. Now, each of these are primarily melee focused, as you might assume. There are a few yeah. ranged abilities, but for the most part, you are meant to be out on the front Wait, line. the Gunlancer is a Warrior subclass? What the fuck? God damn! dishing out damage and helping your team. The great news is that each warrior subclass excels in multiple roles in the game. For both PvE and PvP, any of these are going to be a pretty strong choice. Whatever you're planning to focus on, you really can't go wrong playing one of the warriors. I Starting us off that. is the Berserker. This is the first class that I was initially drawn to. He carries a massive sword and he swings it really hard. Now the Berserker is a this top is what tier I'm burst damage class. Absolutely. You're really mainly focused it's on the best. lining up your abilities to try to dish out a ton of damage in a small window. Now, while strong alone, Berserkers especially excel with just the tiniest bit of support to help offset some of their weaknesses. And at that so point, it's you just become like a wow. damage-dealing machine. For so that ability right there, the Whirlwind ability? Some of their weaknesses. And at that point... All I did in the beta was I put every single skill point into Whirlwind. That was it. I put no skill points in any other ability. And I had my Whirlwind where like half of the time I was Whirlwinding. That was literally the only thing I did. And tomorrow, we're going to be spinning to win you become a damage dealing machine. For the Berserker class identity, you have a fury meter that will fill mm -hmm. up when you attack. And once it is full, you can hit Z to and enter you just go, burst yeah. mode. Once in burst mode, Ape you ninja just swap. become a crazy god. You attack 20% yes. faster and have a 30% increased crit rate. On top of that, you can hit Z a second time to activate bloody rush. This what is a fuck? skill that slashes for massive damage, then stabs forward, dealing more damage and knocking enemies back. When god you first damn, start playing this class, they, uh, things are on the slower side for the Berserker. That's definitely the case. They've got some fairly long cooldowns, and sometimes you might be left waiting on abilities. As things yeah, progress, that is true. things really that speed problem. up for the class, and it becomes much more fluid. On the PvE side, you are one okay. of the strongest burst damage classes. For that reason, you're great for chunking health bars. So also, just you've got everything. debuffs on enemies, as well as buffs for your allies that just across the board will help boost your party damage. So that's like the 
going thing, a berserker it's like in your one group is just going to mean you're dealing a lot more damage to the boss. In terms yeah. of PvP, they are also very strong. Of really, in that are. team setting, though, if you have a group that can help peel and set up engagements, you're really able to wipe up players. So it's literally quickly. just like Burning Crusade. A little bit of support, but with that, okay. they really become a powerhouse. So yeah. you know, if you like hitting things hard, I think the berserker across the board is a pretty good choice. Next Absolutely. up, we've got the paladin wielders of the light and a one-handed sword. Paladins are kind of this offensive healer. They deal okay damage. It's not quite on par with the pure DPS classes, but they can definitely help out, and they are the best damage dealing support. Actually, that's their main role, though, as a buff and support class. In fact, the Paladin is one of only yeah, two okay. supports still talking about Paladin? playable in the game. Oh, so while you're dealing damage, you okay. are primarily there to aid your allies with yeah. shields, as well as a yep. passive heal. As yeah. a Paladin, the class identity is this piety meter. It will fill up when in combat and dealing damage. I feel like that's perfect for McConnell. Full, you've got two different abilities you can choose from. There is Sacred Executioner, which increases the attack range of basic attacks and punish skills by 30%, while also increasing the damage of those attacks and abilities. Or you can choose to activate Holy Aura, which creates this 12 meter aura around your character, increasing all party member damage by 10%. So basically your choice is a stronger buff for yourself or a buff across the board for your teammates. And that's what do you think he'd pick? What do you what do you what do you think he'd pick? <laughs> the teammate aura? Yeah, I mean 100%, right? 100% that's really what you're likely to do in a group setting. Now, yeah. while leveling, you know, you're certainly able to hold your own. You can clear the content, you can make it to the story, and you can do a fair bit of these solo things. Your damage isn't that bad. But certainly come end game, expect to be a support. That is the role of a paladin. You are there to help out your team, helping them survive and do more damage. In PvE, paladins are highly sought after because, again, they are one of only two supports in the game. So any party is going to want either you or a bard in their group pretty much for all of the content. Um, you're not going to be a strong damage dealer here, though. I, ha I, can't, I have to reiterate that. The okay. class just does not scale well compared to pure DPS yeah. classes. Your strength is your supporting skills, your shields, and your healing. However, in terms of PvP, with the way yeah. scaling works in yeah. Lost Ark, the Paladin is actually a real damage threat on top of all of their powerful support skills. So in addition to your shields and your healing, you've got some strong peeling. So it's literally just like, again, in Classic WoW. Where even though I can out damage a rep paladin with my eyes closed, I still lose to one in a duel. Yeah, this is just, it, it's a PvP class, obviously. I'll tell S Fan this. Yeah, it's actually a fucking paladin's a fucking PvP class. I, I, I don't know if S Fan is gonna play or not. I think that he is. I've got a pretty good feeling he's gonna play, but we'll have to see if he sticks with it and damage dealing capabilities. So if you want to feel like a holy warrior dealing some damage, but primarily helping your team, I think you'd be happy with the Paladin. And last but not least, we have got the Gun Lancer. Now, okay, at yeah, first this glance, is... this looks like a tank, and it is the tankiest class in the game. The truth right. is, though, it's just a super durable damage dealer. It keeps up with every other damage class while also being tanky and supporting the team. I think the best way to think of it is instead of like a glass cannon, you are a rock. You deal boatloads of damage while just standing still rather than like hopping around evading damage. No, you just sit there, you take the damage and you deal it back in return. This has actually become one of my favorite classes since playing it and it looks like a strong contender for my main pick. One That's unique really mechanic cool. for the Gun Lancer is that instead of a forward dodger down- Yeah, you're basically half I feel like this has got to be like, there's no way it does as much damage as one of the other, other DPS classes though, right? I mean like, because it's like, how is it that this guy just stands still? He's like, yeah, so uh, in this class, uh, basically uh, you just stand still and, and you don't move and you don't have to do any mechanics and you just do the same damage as everybody else. Because if that's what it is. Berserker might not really be that good. Yeah, it might not be that good. We might have to re-roll, guys. And actually, like, if we re-roll and I play this class, well, I guess, okay, uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, we're going to start with Berserker regardless, though, okay? Because, like, I remember, do y'all remember whenever I played uh, Dark Souls 3 Cinders and I used the fucking shield? And I beat, like, every boss on my first try. Because you just block the attack. Always attacking, I block. But block, block, oh, block, nope, attacks get blocked, nope, block, that's it. Gun lances are gods, bro? Yeah, I might actually do that. I, I could just play both. 
Ash, which all of the other classes have. Gun Lancers have this short range back step. It's also the evade with the shortest cooldown, so you can dodge damage more frequently than other classes. So you don't need class to dodge, identity, you can Gun dodge better than everybody else? shield meter. It will fill up passively as well what? as every time you attack an enemy. And then at any point, no matter House how full fair. the meter is, you can activate one of two skills. There is defensive stance. What this the? surrounds you with a shield that absorbs incoming attacks, depleting your shield meter instead of your health. The only drawback is you move 50% slower on the plus side but it, doesn't it completely matter. ignores enemy attacks mechanics gives you push what? immunity so you can just sit there and not flinch you can ignore what? mechanics with this skill it's crazy your other skill is the battlefield shield this will consume oh all of your available shield meter at the time look at you move instantly to any location and then smash down damaging enemies while also giving you a shield proportional what? to the consumed shield meter as well as granting push immunity to your this team is, and redirecting any damage they take to you fair? for five seconds. For all of these reasons and more, Gun Lancers are highly valued in PvE group content. They can just make fights so much easier. They can distract the boss, they deal strong, consistent damage, and they keep the boss faced away from the other DPS, which in turn- There's no but, though. Like, this is the thing, is like, it's like, okay, this class, uh, it, it's got really great defensives. Uh, its offensive damage is just- incredibly uh strong uh it can just absorb damage and, and it, it's slow well who gives a fuck if it's slow who cares it doesn't matter yeah who gives a shit because by the time that you get there they're gonna die makes their jobs of dealing damage easier. Gun Lancers offer the group shields, they offer a cleanse and damage redirect abilities. All of this will help offset mistakes. They've got that taunt skill that can even skip some mechanics. They can ignore mechanics themselves thanks to defensive stance. And of they're course. also pretty good at clearing trash. They've got a lot of abilities that deal massive increased damage. So they're good at bosses, trash, mobs. trash In mobs. the PvP side of things, they are really good at peeling PvP. and disrupting just, enemies and okay. just in general supporting your team. In general, you are there to to make the other team's life a lot more difficult so that your DPS can take them out. Currently- Oh, so it's just like in WoW PvP, where every fucking ability that the tank does, just, it, it's not even about, it's just about fucking annoying people. Yeah, it's a CC bot. Uh, we'll see how this goes, okay? Do we know the time the game's playable? Yeah, um, if you have the Founders Pack, uh, tomorrow it's playable at 11 a.m. Central Time. The Gun Lancer is my favorite class, and yeah, this is probably what I'm going to play at launch. So there you go. That is an overview of the three warrior classes available for the Western release of Lost Ark. As I said at the top, you really can't go wrong here, whether you want to be a burst damage god, a shield and healing support, or That's really an immovable cool. rock that also hits hard. I, Any of these warrior classes? I, I knew I made the right call, by the way. Like, I, I knew I made the right fucking call. Uh, definitely, warrior is the class. Warrior is 100% the class. It's going to be Warrior, Gunner. Hey, folks, this is Riker with a. I'm surprised, Riker, dude. I remember watching Riker's videos back for fucking Diablo 3. It's good to see him still doing it. And uh, anyway, I would say Warrior, Gunner, Martial Artist, Assassin, Mage. Uh, the Mage is probably like my. That's like my lowest tier. I, I feel like the Mage is just. Eh, it's not like it's not as cool right because there's no way no fucking shot that i'm playing a healer okay let's just get that off the table and on top of that the mage abilities like the fire ones look really cool but the lightning ones and the the uh, yeah the lightning ones it just looked like there wasn't really a lot of interaction with the abilities it just you know it just like wasn't really that cool you know what i mean like, compared to the other ones uh warriors have a healer yeah yeah, that's right. Lamau healer hate? Oh, I don't hate healers. I think they're great. I'm just not going to play them. That's about all, all there is to it. Supporting us for wussies? No, it's not. It's not. No, no, no. It's just that I, I like playing a warrior because that's just, in my opinion, I think that's the coolest fucking thing, okay?